Hey there folks, welcome back to the channel. So today's title is a strong one, Betrayal in the Bay, but it's fitting and I'm going to get right to it exactly why I chose this title. For a long time now, a lot of conservationists, a lot of supporters of the striped bass population and just the general health of the Chesapeake have been railing and fighting against what's called the reduction fishery. The reduction fishery is a practice used by a company, Canadian based company, by the name of Omega Protein, operating within the mouth and the very lower portion of the Chesapeake Bay. And what they do is they drag enormous nets to catch what are called menhaden. If you're not familiar with what menhaden are, I'll show you some here on the screen, but they're a crucial base to a lot of the food webs and food chains within the Chesapeake. Reduction fisheries being an issue is not new. Virginia is literally the only state along the Atlantic coast who still allows a reduction fishery at all because it's been demonstrated in the past just how damaging they can be. Well, we had actually gotten to a point where we were about to commission and actually put into practice a study to take a stock assessment of Menhaden within the lower Chesapeake. And unfortunately, due to what seems to be the lobbying efforts of Omega, who said they previously supported such a study, Virginia lawmakers have now pushed this study into the next year. They've delayed it, they've gone back on their words, and in this video, we're gonna hold them accountable. Let's get into the details. So if you wanna look at the bill for yourself, it's called HB 19, House Bill 19, in the Virginia State House. What HB 19 would have done is fund the research to take a stock assessment of Menhaden in the Lower Bay. Up to this point, Omega had claimed that they were in support of a study like this, and many other groups were, of course, also in support. Organizations like the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, and many, many, many more conservation organizations out there, as well as a lot of fishermen and fishing organizations. Everyone was in support of this. But then, at the last minute, Omega Protein employed lobbying efforts, and when they did, members of the Virginia House of Delegates subcommittee pushed this funding consideration into 2025. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the exact list of who these representatives are, even though when they pushed this in the 2025, they did it by voice vote. And one reason that voice votes are sometimes employed is that they don't normally have to be recorded on the record. But this voice vote was carried unanimously. So everyone on that subcommittee who was present absolutely did this. And at the end of this video and the links to this video, you will find a list of those subcommittee members, those representatives, as well as a link to which ones are actually receiving funding, lobbying money from Omega Protein. But again, let's get into the nuts and bolts of what's going on here. Menhaden are a crucial base for the food web and food chain in the lower bay. Species that rely on them include striped bass, bluefish, whales, dolphins, ospreys, redfish, and many others. And the reduction fishery itself has long been pointed to by many conservationists as a main driver of the issues that we are now seeing in a lot of these different stock assessments for striped bass, for ospreys. Ospreys in particular, in the nesting areas around the southern portion of the Chesapeake Bay where this reduction fishery is practiced, have just had the greatest reduction in population on record. Out of the 167 osprey nests that are monitored, only 17 during this past season actually produced young. And it is theorized by the scientists conducting these studies that these ospreys are literally starving to death because that is how badly omega protein, I wanna use a word here, it is how badly and how heavily they are harvesting these menhaden and the effects that it has on the Chesapeake are long reaching. Now, what is a reduction fishery? Essentially what they do, they drag huge nets, which of course have a lot of bycatch and kill many other species while they're gathering up all of these menhaden. And then they grind them up for various industrial uses. Again, this is not even a US based company. Omega protein is based out of Canada. Each year they harvest tens of thousands of metric tons of menhaden from the Chesapeake. And as I said before, Virginia is literally the only state left along the Atlantic coast who even allows a reduction fishery. Now the creation of HB 19 that was supposed to fund this research, that was being pushed 
by a lot of organizations who are heavily involved in the health of the bay and the sustainability of our fisheries. Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Virginia Institute of Marine Sciences, and many more. And the Virginia Institute, to their credit, they took on the task of leading the effort to develop nine scientific criteria and sampling methodologies that were going to be used to take a quality stock assessment of the Menhaden. And again, Omega Protein agreed. They were part of the consensus that agreed on these nine recommendations for how this study would be done. So it's like they can say that, oh, they weren't part of the considerations or there was a problem with the methodology in the study. No, they signed on to the consensus and helped develop it. And along the way have done their best to weaken it, but nonetheless agreed and were part of the consensus on the types of metrics that were gonna be used to survey the Menhaden population. Now, the Chesapeake has been suffering from low Menhaden recruitment for over 20 years at this point. Recently, we had the ASFMC actually come down and make a ruling on striped bass, which was excellent. Those coastwide regulations are much needed. But in the case of Menhaden, ASFMC has decided in the past, based on the data, that overall, Menhaden are not overfished. But here's the crucial point. That's based on a coastwide assessment of Menhaden. And we already know there's only one area that still has a reduction fishery, and that is the Southern Chesapeake, and it's only allowed by Virginia. They're the only state that still allows it. So logically, it doesn't make sense to gauge the Menhaden health within the bay based on a coastwide assessment. That's why we've been pushing so hard to get a local study done in the Chesapeake and where this production fishery is actually occurring. And now it's been delayed for yet another year. And those who claim they want to support sound science and everything else, now we know exactly where Omega stands, as well as where those politicians stand who claim to support it and who take the money of Omega. So here's the bottom line. If Omega really believes, and these representatives really believe, that they are not causing a massive detriment to the health of the bay via this reduction fishery and overharvest of Menhaden, why have they worked so hard? to weaken the bill, and then when it finally even comes to a point where it actually be funded, delay it to the next year. It should be obvious exactly why they would do that. So what can we do? There's various organizations out there that you can join. There's Facebook groups out there I'll leave links to who have been fighting the good fight on this for a long time. But what I would recommend you do is use the links in this video to find the contact information for all of these representatives who held this unanimous voice vote to delay this funding of this crucial bill and this study into the next legislative year, and then ask them if they believe in sound science-based fisheries management. Ask them why this study was not funded after a group consensus was reached by all the relevant partners. And lastly, I would ask them if they think it's a conflict of interest that so many members of the Virginia House, including many members of this committee, receive either directly or indirectly, campaign contributions from Omega and vote for them accordingly. That would be my recommendation. And I'll make a quick point here, folks. This money is flowing to both sides of the aisle. It's not just one. So that's about it, folks. That is the betrayal as it stands today. You have the links you need in the video description here to contact people to let them know exactly how you feel about what's been done. As for me, this is yet one more example of how money has infiltrated politics at the cost of the public waters that we all call home and the species and environment that we care about and would like to enjoy and have our children enjoy for years to come. Well, with all that being said, let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. If you think this is helpful, make sure you share it out there far and wide. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a good one.